So we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen. And if anyone shouts out, do the dance, you'd better be aiming it at John Travolta and not him. <laughs> it's Mr. Ricky Gervais, ladies and gentlemen. Down, Ricky <laughs> How are you, Ricky? You look very well. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, you're in the middle of a, a big tour at the moment, aren't you? Yeah. How lot many of tour. dates? How many dates do you do on a big tour? Um, oh, well, not not too many. Um, about I think a hundred with the London dates. Well, that's a huge number, though. Well, yeah, but I could do more. <laughs> okay, and when you're doing a tour like that, uh, and I know uh, comedians seem to pride themselves on this, when you advertise your tickets, they sell out very quickly, don't they? Um, well, yeah. I know, I know Peter Kay and, uh, and Lee Evans, their tickets sell out very, very quickly indeed. Yours probably sell out quite quickly as well. I don't know <laughs> if you've compared at all, but I'm imagining yours sell out about as quickly as theirs. Yeah, probably. Do you need to advertise to sell out tickets? Uh, no, in fact, I don't know why I'm here. See you later. No, the, the... <laughs> Here's why I was asking about the tour, because I noticed you did advertise all over the place, and I thought partly you don't need to, and partly I thought, well, presumably... Do you mean I did advertise all over well, the place? Well, I saw some adverts about? in magazines and stuff like that. Well, would you advertise in f***ing public toilets? No, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what depends are you talking on, about? Depends what on the are, audience what, you're trying to attract. But what you're... are you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying... I if you're working think... up to a joke, just f***ing do it, because I'm getting bored. <laughs> If I've ruined your inn, what are you talking no, about? You, advertise. you advertise everywhere. Just, just you sell up quick. You advertise. Do you have to... What? What the f*** are you talking about? Uh, well, here's what, here's what I was asking. Because I don't right. think... I don't right, think okay, you, just get to the right. I, I don't think you do need Let's to... Let's do it again. Right. No, no, right, don't, okay, don't right. do it again. Don't. Fuck you. Right. OK. Come, bring it to face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I love you on the side. <laughs> Oh, that hurt. Okay, um... Hi. <laughs> Hi, Ricky. You're, you're, you're on a big tour at the moment, I believe. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's called <laughs> Fame. How many days do you do? Oh, about a hundred. Do you have to advertise to sell out? Or you do you done it No, because I'm, trying, because I'm building up. The point I'm making is about advertising. Right. You have to let me mention that. Okay. I can't do the yeah, thing. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um... But here's what surprised me, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what I've been building up to so elegantly, is that I was uh, strolling out in town. In, oh. in Trafalgar Square. Oh, right. Okay, and I knew Ricky was on tour, as we all did, and I knew that he'd sold out, I believe, in something like eight or nine minutes, the whole tour, all these times. Of... And yet then I saw possibly the largest poster of a man's face I've ever seen in my entire life. Have a look at this. This is in Trafalgar Square here in London. Look at the size of that. Look, it's gigantic. It's as big as, like... Look, that's got to be four stories high, okay? And let's face it, it's not the kind of face you want to see normal size, but certainly <laughs> four stories high. And then look at Nelson's column in the, in the foreground. Look, okay. <laughs> so, so he's bigger than that Nelson. That looks like me laying down with a huge erection. <laughs> but Nelson won a war for us. Nelson is a hero, and look at your big, ugly face in Trafalgar Square. Tourists don't know what to make of it. I see your point. If the tour's already sold out, why, why spend the money on the giant poster in Trafalgar Square? Because I can, and I like to show off. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for answering so succinctly. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're going to New York with it, aren't you? You're going to do it in Madison Square Garden. And although, OK, you're a huge star here, and I know you're known in the States as well, because um, Office was a big hit. I think Extras has done well as well, hasn't it, on HBO? It's done OK, yeah. But will it, will it work? Will your stand-up work for an American audience, you think? Well, I've got to get sort of an international hour together, really. So um, I'm doing um, uh, a couple of uh, theatres... And uh, um, uh, what, in the states, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> you could have done. You, you see, you're getting an international out together. You oh, could right. have done it here with I'll like American what, students. It's either drugs or Alzheimer's. But what the f up with you tonight? Really, <laughs> it really is unbelievable. When when you do a tour oh, that you've sold out, we've established. <laughs> we've established. I think that the I'm tickets never are sold doing out. the show again. <laughs> I'll hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ricky is, I think, a natural comedian. You seem to be... It seems to come very naturally to you. I mean, I know you write when you're doing a tour. And by the way, how, how's the tour selling? Is it doing well for it's you? It's doing all right. And the, the, we sold about 50,000 tickets in the first nine minutes, and then the, uh, we sold it out in about an hour. But even though it's sold out, I put a big picture of myself in um, <laughs> Trafalgar Square, which is a bit bad, because I haven't even won a war. <laughs> We'll edit most of that out, <laughs> for your sake. Um, uh, 
you, but you strike me as being a naturally funny person, and I, I've spent some time with you, and, and you always make me laugh, and you always make me laugh on TV. But did it, w was it maddening for you in the period when you weren't on TV, when you weren't and, and thinking, okay, I can do this, I'm as funny as many of the people I see on stage or TV. Did you ever feel frustrated by the fact that you didn't have a, an outlet for that? Not at all. No, I, um, I, I, I wasn't sitting around thinking, when am I going to be a professional comedian? Because um, even though I was, so, you know, growing up, you know, the most important thing was to have a laugh, really. When I, where I grew up in a sort of working class family, um, as long as you had a job or, you know, did right by your family, it was having a laugh that was important. I came from a, uh, you know, a family of people that, you know, were, uh, mucked around and teased each other. And, and um, I, <laughs> at my, um, my dad's funeral, OK, uh, we we're, were all there, and the vicar started the, the speech about my dad and, of course, you know, we were crying. I could hear all my nieces and you know, sister and all, everyone sort of like crying. But I came prepared, I came with a packet of those tissues and I sort of handed them out. Then I could hear them crying then, and then laughing because I'd written all the tissues, stop snivelling. <laughs> <laughs> and you snotty cow. <laughs> And the vicar thought we were mental. <laughs> but that's a, but that's a, 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 fun, a nice thing to do, in actual fact. Of course, fact, yeah. And the, thing yeah, like no, that. of course, yeah. Which yeah. was obviously genuinely, you know, a sad day. Yeah, well, but it's, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, my dad was 83 and, you know, it comes to all of us. <laughs> when I said naturally funny, I mean, you have your moments, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK, uh, extras, I really grew to love. Early on, I didn't like it as much, because after the office... Because you weren't in it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, I really got like it. And now, I, never, I didn't think I'd be saying this, but I really would like a third series, but you're not doing a third series. Rather like The Office, you're bailing out early, aren't you? We're doing a, um, a special, yeah. A I've got an special. idea for you for the special. Go on. Uh, they go on holiday to Spain. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it again? <laughs> I'm sorry, I honestly drifted off then. Go on, sorry, sorry. Go on, sorry, sorry. Sorry, What is your plan for the extra special? I don't know, we haven't written it yet. You must have an idea, though. I do one of those things, you know, those people go on um, um, game shows and, yeah. they, and they ask their uh, fiancé, will you marry me? And because she's so intimidated not to embarrass them in front of the audience, John, will you be in extras? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know what I like about John is John is a huge What thing. I like about that is, that's how interesting this interview is, they were actually chatting. <laughs> You can't even get their attention, and they're coming on this show. <laughs> they have to what chance do you have people who've got remote control at home? Right, listen. Uh, you're doing a new thing with Stephen, aren't you? You're going to do a, Is it a drama you're doing next after this? Uh, well, we're, we're writing the um, extra special, and, uh, and then um, next year um, we want to do. Yeah, we want to do something a, a bit more. The things that have excited us over the last few years. Oh, can I stop you there? Because we put up a picture of Stephen Merchant, and people just started laughing. <laughs> which doesn't show you in a good light, I'm afraid. Well, to be fair, he's in character, and he's making himself look gimper than he really is. But not much. <laughs> Sorry, Stephen, I didn't mean to say gimper than you really are. I was pointing out that you were sort of doing a funny face. Oh, no, he's not. No, that's not. <laughs> that's imposing. Um, but will you be OK writing drama? Will that, I mean, I know there were dramatic elements in the office, but is it something that you... Because I can't imagine you really knuckling down and staying on a dramatic course. To be well, as long as you, you know, write about what you know, the drama's not going to be English people running around with guns and, you know, uh, fighting marauding... Vikings. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna, <laughs> it's going to be a, an everyday tale about something, the way you find an angle on it. So, so kind um, of like The Office, but without the laughs. Well... Um, well, there will be laughs. I mean, uh, The Sopranos, probably one of the best shows ever on television, is really funny as well. It's just, it's just classy throughout. So even though it's a drama and it deals with, you know, morality and... and so it'll be a drama with comedy, it'll be a dramedy. <laughs> You're writing a dramedy. Yeah, I'm writing a dramedy, yeah. yeah. That's a type of camel. <laughs> Sounds like you say you were riding a dromedy then. People might think that you're planning something special at the zoo. I don't know what you're talking about now again. Again, I lost it. I, I knew it was a, nearly a normal conversation, okay. but then you lost me at the last one. Uh, and you're in a big movie this summer. We should mention this very briefly. This is Stardust. And, and in the interest of full disclosure, I should point out that I am involved in this in a very roundabout way because the script for this film was written by my beautiful and talented wife. Uh, and it stars not just Ricky Gervais, but also Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer and Peter O'Toole and people like that. Working with De Niro, that must have been quite something, wasn't it? Well, it was I know amazing. you used him in extras, but you met him here, didn't well, you? Well, no, but yeah, exactly, yeah. The um, call came, do you, want to, do you want to spend a, a couple of days in a film with Robert De Niro? Yes. Um, and I, I went along and um, I met him, and, and I think he's the greatest actor in the world. So I get there and um, um, he, you know, I, I try not to be intimidated. I mucked around the usual and made him laugh and it, and it was great, but I realised it was bravado, because after about seven hours, I went up to him and went, I think you're the greatest actor in... <laughs> Will you be in extras? He went, 
um, I'm doing this sort of thing. It was, it was very quiet. Yeah. I went, uh, well, he went, he went um, I'll call you. And about three days later, he did. Wow. He called me up and said, hi, it's Bob. And I went, I thought I told you never to f call me. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed, he laughed. And, uh, and we had, uh, we found a day. You've got to take a chance. Yeah, thank you? God for that. And he just went, uh, <laughs> I'd have to go to Stephen. He go, what did he say? I went, it didn't go as well as I thought. <laughs> I, went, I made a little joke. <laughs> yeah, we, we haven't got him. Um, and, uh, and then um, we, uh, we, had, we had him for uh, like a, an hour. And it was great because um, I wasn't in the scene, so it was, it was him and Stephen, and I was uh, I was directing. And at one point, I came over and I said to Stephen, I said, "Oh, you might try this." And he went, "Yeah, cheers." I went back, and De Niro went, "What about me?" I went, "So I went, how am I doing? Okay?" Oh. And I went, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> I went, "Yeah, you're doing all right." And the crew laughed, and he sort of realised what. It, but he meant it straight down the line, humble. Right. You know, you, you're directing this. How am I doing? Yeah. He's, he's an absolute. But gentleman. that must be an ambition ticked off your list, then. An Absolutely. ambition you perhaps thought you'd never realise. No, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, one of the, yeah, right. one, of the, one of the perks. Definitely. So if you get that movie with Jimmy Carr now, you'll be sorted. <laughs> what are you laughing at? He's good. Oh, Dan, why are you doing this? Just to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ricky Gervais. Thank you, Ricky. There you go. Well done, Ricky Gervais.